Hello? Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm great. It's lovely to look at you sporting your glasses. I love it. Thank you. Those are those are <laughs> those, those are awesome. I love them. How are, how are you doing? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. Things are crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we know. But you you guys know. You guys know. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, Are you and a, you and your family okay? Yeah. Well, it is uh, it's tough. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah, totally. Well, I want to thank you so much for for talking to us. We've uh, we've been a, a, a admirer of yours since we first the first thing we actually saw you in. Surprisingly, uh, I believe actually it wasn't the first thing. I thought it was Sir because we saw that at the beginning of this year when it came out. Uh, but I, I we we did see in Greasy Medium, uh, and we were actually at the premiere. Were you at the premiere? <laughs> yeah we we were at the premiere in in mumbai, in mumbai. yeah God, okay. <laughs> yeah you know, i think you might have seen more of my work than my family and friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah so angry medium was at the um i don't remember these mm. things because yeah. usually awkward right yeah. Uh, uh, like yeah. these large gatherings, you have to see your work. What if you don't like it? And or, uh, but then everyone's worked really hard, mm -hmm. and then you can't. You no, know, they're usually very stressful. These screenings. So uh, mm -hmm. I yeah, I usually don't remember uh, if I was there. If I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. No, no, we got. What do you think? We we were there, but the the screening actually didn't have subtitles, so we we watched the film with completely with no subtitles. <laughs> oh my god! That's yes, we had we had the, the, my love Indrani, who is Bengali, was sitting in between us, so she speaks Hindi as well. So she was quietly turning to both of us and translating for us. <laughs> oh my! God. That's not Ask why you guys have a really strong connection with India, and, and given that you watched so many films and visited India. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite quite a journey, uh, absolutely. And uh, we we are very actually excited that we we ended up finding you finally, um, because uh, we, once we what'd you say? I've been sitting on this chair for the last 40 years. <laughs> I don't do much. Um, so how did how did you actually get started in acting? How did I start? Well, actually, um, I was in college and I just entered first year college in Delhi and uh, I saw, you know, your first day. There's a there's a kind of cultural uh, program, and there was a one man show by this incredible artist called Piyush Mishra. He's now written for the films that you've seen coming mm -hmm. out of India. Probably every third or fourth film he's written the lyrics for the songs. He's a really gifted, really gifted man, and uh, he he this, did this one man show, and I, I remember seeing it and thinking. Wow, what kind of people are these who can have such empathy for being able to portray, uh, you know, such? And it, 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 he played. I don't even remember how many, but quite a few characters. And and uh, he just, you know, just moved from one to another so seamlessly. And I I, I saw him, and I, I was like, really, I would really love to. Uh, I would really love to have this kind of empathy. You know, but I don't know how it's possible to inhabit the lives of others without having empathy, you know. Mm. And uh, but my issue was while that was really attractive uh, as an idea, I had a stammer 
and you know my father has a staff <laughs> so uh, it, it was really like uh, like of course i can't be an actor but wouldn't it be wonderful but i it coincided my getting into college coincided with me encountering a buddhist philosophy and uh, and having grown up in a household that doesn't believe in any kind of you know uh, there's no spiritual practice or you know religion or, and uh, because my father was quite you know grew up in the air force and he was like you know we have really seen people do very inhumane things in the name of religion so it's never allowed it's not going to be allowed in our home um and uh, but i i saw myself really attracted to this philosophy and it didn't seem like you know uh you know it, it was it seemed like really about personal exploration and uh i i don't know i think i was just really wondering i was so tired of being mediocre you know i was one of those kids who was just not good at anything even my handwriting was in spectacular you know that kid who can like you know their at least their handwriting is you know good or they're really good at music or maybe like and i don't mean by good by being really great but you know they have a talent for something like a a propensity for something i was really good at being sincere but mm. that's not a, a when you're 14 15 16 you have a stammer i mean what am i going to do with sincerity you know am i going to put it like what am what am i gonna, like what 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 is that thing it's so it's so shitty you know i'm and don't like only your parents can love you for being sincere you know and uh, <laughs> it's like it was uh yeah i think i was very crippled by uh and my parents never made me feel there was anything wrong with me because of the stammer uh so i'm really grateful for they created such a sense of normalcy around it um uh, but i was very crippled by the idea that i don't have anything you know like yeah. like what it, what am i here for i could i could study engineering i could become a doctor if i worked hard i could do anything but what do i want to do i really don't know because i'm not good at really anything you know and mm. i think i took up with this philosophy really because I, i i think it believes in the idea and my mentor believed in the idea of that every one of us is so unique yeah. and a person who knows why they're put on this earth to what they you know to do that 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 person is enlightened mm-hmm. and an ordinary human just someone who doesn't know why they're here and i know something about that just attracted me to it and i took to it because i really wanted to know what am i good at mm-hmm. you know what am i put here to and uh, and i as i started practicing it coincided with me seeing this amazing one man show and I, a year into college i mustered the courage to audition for something it was a silent role which is why i could get away no one knew i had a stammer and uh, because i i kind of manage life in monosyllables quite effectively you know uh but i uh, once i started acting uh i think with a couple of like 20 30 shows and my stammer just kind of disappeared and i knew something had happened i knew there was something therapeutic that happened mm. and that i didn't have the language for it then and then i looked online and i you, you had to go to cyber cafes back then because no one had a personal computer at home it was all it's all so romantic right now my <laughs> god how long have you- <laughs> uh but anyway so there was that time and uh so yeah I went to a cyber cafe and found that this drama therapy theater theater education and I was like okay so that's what happened and now I'm now I'm curious mm. I really want to know and that's that's how I went to study and and all that happened yeah 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 and what led you from Delhi to focusing your educational training and then teaching because there's a whole lot I know you did in New York. What led you to New York? Well, actually, once I realized that something something mysterious had happened with me, something therapeutic, something I knew the drama had told the cops sitting in my head that don't listen to them. Mhm. Mhm. I know I know they're going to tell you that you can't do this, but don't listen to them. and uh, and so i knew something had happened i knew my life was opening up and so i had anyway decided that i want to study more and i really i really want to study i want to understand what happened and acting was really no, not something given that nobody in my family comes from that background it was not something that was really viable it was, i mean it was all right as a 
as something one was interested in, but as a career. So I knew I had to study. And I had a, anyway a very academic bent of mind. I love studying. I can be. A st I want to be a student all my life. And uh, so I did my master's in, finished my master's in literature. And I was planning to do my second master's in drama therapy or wherever I get in. Uh, you know, there were three American universities that I had applied to. Uh, there was Harvard, uh, Columbia and NYU because, I, you know, each application was so expensive. Mm. Uh, Harvard rejected mm. me and I just hated them for it. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and NYU happened. And, uh, and, yeah, and it took a long time, you know, from when one actually wanted to go to one actually going because... Uh, it is it is so difficult for an average American to afford that kind of private university tuition earning in dollars and it's it's absolutely impossible for a middle class Indian family to even want it uh, but I wanted it and I think that's the confidence that my that this philosophy was giving me I was like I want it I don't care what my circumstances are I also know why I want it I do think something that happened to me was incredible and I think if I can learn it and I can uh, you know, this can this can be many other people's stories, and uh, I, you know, uh, I, I don't know. I was just really committed to it, and and it took five years. I I applied for a national scholarship. It had many many rounds. I worked a lot in that time in in on myself and um, teaching theater and publishing children. You know, it just just a lot of odd jobs while I was studying, and and I think in doing all that, I kind of realized that I really do want to study and in that time monsoon wedding happened mm. um, so uh, after the success of monsoon wedding I was told to actually that come to Bombay you know that that's where it is and uh, and I went to Bombay man a uh, few people thought I was a maid I was really a maid and they were really surprised I spoke English um, then some people weren't really sure what they would do with someone like me because I stood in the cross-section of things. The mainstream, I'm talking about 2001, 2002. Uh, Monsoon Wedding was a kind of breakout film, right? It was one of those indie films that did really well commercially in India. Um, it was not, it didn't follow the formula of anything that came before it. Uh, so it was a bit of a... It was a wild card, mm. you know, and that was my debut film was an absolute wild card, right? And and so I thought, wow, man, this is how great it is. So so I guess, you know, it's going to be really easy. Your first film with Mirana, it does really well. Um, I guess it's just going to be wonderful from now. And <laughs> I would have to go off on a sabbatical for 10 years, talk my head out and come back and be like, okay, I'm ready, you know? Uh, but no, it was it was Bombay was very very overwhelming and very unknown to me. And also, I don't blame anybody there who I met in that in those few you know two weeks. Uh, I think I didn't know what to do either, and they didn't know what to do with me either. You know, um, and uh, and so I left. I was very very convinced that this is not my time to be here. And I must. I always wanted to do this study. You know, I wanted to know what happened to me, and I should just follow it. And I was told that just give it some time. This is a really demanding city. It's career suicide if you leave right now because uh, everyone's talking about this film. Mm. And uh, there was so much em empathy for the characters of Alice and Dubé. And, you know, I, we got so much attention despite uh, <laughs> when I received the script. You know how you sit, you know, I sat with the pen to underline my lines, where are my scenes? And I kept turning and... Oh, she picks up a plate. Oh, she keeps. <laughs> and I was like, "Damn it, man!" The first film, and it's like I'm just picking up plates, and uh, um, I don't, even, I don't even like doing this at home. You know? <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I knew, I knew something really special happened yeah. on set. I, I mean, Mira, you know, who is a magnet, and yeah. who's like. A, just her energy was uh, I, I was intoxicated I was absolutely drunk like punch drunk uh, the kind of charisma she has yeah. and uh, and I don't think I realized who Declan Quinn was you know uh, I mean 
um, what kind of films he's shot, uh, to be able to give a new actor or a new actor to have such a seasoned, such an incredible DOP who shot the entire film almost in handheld so that an actor like me, a completely new actor, never even understands. And he would just tell me, just do what you have to do. You, I, I'll follow you. I'm like, oh, okay, this is like, okay, this, I guess it's just That's simple, awesome. you know. And, and that was your first experience. So, you know, you're really like, um, you're really, I was really, really blessed. Uh, but it wasn't, it didn't make it easy. It made also then my standards and expectations from life and from this world. Uh, it just became so much. She set the standard and bar so high um, that if I couldn't get that, then it had to be something else, which was just as meaningful for me. And that happened to be studying. Mm. So I was told, like, Nasir had told me that this is career suicide. You know, you shouldn't leave. And uh, I just was so convinced that mm. it's not. How, how can learning be suicidal? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it can't be. What you put in to yourself doesn't dissipate into nothing. You know, it, it becomes something. Um, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad yeah. I went because, you know, I've never learned acting formally, you know. And... Uh, and then getting an opportunity to uh, to be amongst uh, you know classmates and colleagues and uh, who knew a few forms of dance could play instruments they they were really trained you know and I didn't know how to dance or play any instrument nor can I sing nor can I dance nor can I uh, I don't know I had no special skills I had done a film it was successful. Uh, and then people just assume that you must be talented then mm. because people associate su success with talent. It's not, it's, it's not necessarily true yeah. <laughs> at, all. I, at all. I felt like a failure every day of my graduate program in NYU because I just knew that I was so, I, I just, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, I'm just going to get a taste of things. Yeah. I'm never going to be an expert in anything. And, uh, uh, but, you know, these things take time, you know, you, you feel you're not really learning anything uh, and you walk away from it feeling like so shitty about yourself and five years down the line, you're, you know, I mean, I finished my graduation and then I worked at Rikers Island uh, and I did drama therapy there and worked, you know, with the inmates there with women in domestic violence shelters, kids. Uh, in New York who were, uh, you know, ha uh, had, uh, you know, South Asian background or were from China and were finding it really difficult um, to, um, what's the word, to assimilate into American culture. Um, but I think my, the, the, the days at Rikers, watching the inmates uh, process information, being transformed by them, they're ch they, they really challenged me because they couldn't understand my accent. I couldn't understand theirs. So much of slang. That, Do you think I'm a lemon? Do you think I'm a lemon? I'm like, no, I don't think you're a lemon at all. Why would I? You? You're a human being. You know? I don't. I, I, I was so bad. And then I start crying, you know, like a little bit. But I'm, a, I'm his teacher. I'm the facilitator. And he's like, no, I just mean. Then he understood I didn't understand anything. He was like, no, I mean, do you think I was born yesterday? I was like, oh, that's what it means. Are you a lemon? I was like, oh my god. I, you know, so even when you think you've kind of gotten somewhere, you spent five years to get the scholarship to come and study in this country. You studied really hard while everyone slept. You were still in this library because, you know, you're like, my goodness, my country's paid for this entire incredibly expensive tuition. So I just must study extra, even though no one's asked me to mm -hmm. uh, get a job that, you know, you really like, you know, you, my one of my professors at NYU ran this company and I, and I really harassed him, I think, emotionally. I've come all the way from India just to study for me. I know you run this company. I'm telling you, I really need a job in your company. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to go back really disappointed all the way, you know. And I mean, you know, thank God he gave me that job because, uh, but, you know, you never, I nev I've never felt like, oh man, I got this, you know, mm. it's great. I've got this, you know. It, it's always been feeling like you're in the deep end 
and you might learn or you might not you know uh, but i think right i, mean, I think observing understanding that the inmates there were really serving time mm. and making that connection many years later when i left my life in america for many reasons i had a you know uh, my love story with america came to an end and uh, once i decided to come back and i was in an audition room uh, i realized how much i'd actually learned and uh, and I, I was, I was, yeah, I, I was ready. I think I was ready for Bombay now after mm. having been at Rikers in New York. I think, I think New York toughened me up, you know. <laughs> uh, it's tough. It's tough. Sure. <laughs> it's a tough city yeah. to survive as a student. Uh, and uh, it toughened me up. Rikers toughened me up. The idea, the connection that my ability and the chance and the gift that I had to observe the the students at Rikers, uh, the young men and women there who were serving time, made me realize actually cinema is just an exploration of time. You mm. know, you, make, you know, you make someone you know, you know, film can show you a, a, you know a day, it can it can collapse twenty years in two hours. It's how you frame time and. Uh, and I never realized that that my interactions with them, what they would teach me, would have such a profound impact on how I audition and and I I, I understand time, you know, and rhythm uh, in a scene. It it I mean really they became they are they really were the best acting teachers I could have ever had, and yeah. and I'm so glad I left Bombay when I did because I don't think I would have ever been able to. Um, I don't think I would have even attracted the kind of films that I did. You know, I don't think a kiss or a so or any of these would have really happened. Yeah. Uh, because in order to embrace the unfamiliar, I, I, you know, I had, I had to, I, I think I had to sh- shed a lot of skin, which, which happened at Rikers because it, it's so raw. You yeah. know, you're sitting between guilt and innocence. You're sitting between people. Uh, you know your sanity and insanity. You know, so it, it's such a liminal space being in a correct correctional facility. You really wonder why am I not inside? Why are you here? You know, it's just a matter of chance. Uh, it's just a matter of privilege. Uh, and yeah, that I mean, it did. It, it I, I also left America because of Rikers Island. While Rikers Island gave me so much, and while America gave me so much, I think when you love someone, you shouldn't know about them so soon. Things about them so soon, <laughs> intimate details about them too soon. And I think I, 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 I just, I, 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 you know, it was lovely to be a student. But once I started working in America. The way the correctional facilities work, the the profiling there, yeah. combined with uh, when you see each student, uh, each child there, they were put on certain drugs when they acted out. Those drugs have side effects of severe depression, anxiety. Then they're put on antidepressants. Yep. And uh, but then, so they're it they're rigged for failure, and it's systematic. And it's done through medicine. I couldn't wrap my brain around it. Yeah. I was like, my goodness, this is insane. I can't make my money from this. This can't be my paycheck. I'm going to go back and act in films. <laughs> I think I've had, I've had my heart, like my heart was twisted. Like I just felt like uh, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't. It was too much. Uh, yeah. And uh, and so yeah, then. Oh. You know, I feel like we're chatting. Like, is this all right? Did you guys? This a- this is wonderful. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is what we want. Yeah, this yes. is we love this. You could be a motivational speaker. Like, it's 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 wonderful to listen to you. You're you, you could see the the genuineness that you you were talking about in your roles as well. Um, so yeah, this is this is totally fine. This is what we love. We whenever we interview people, we just want it to be a chat. We don't really want it to be like a an interview. So. The, it's wonderful. Don't don't worry about uh, anything. Um, I did want to, since you were talking about, you guys, uh, tell me something about you guys. Where are you guys sitting at right now? This, 
<laughs> Where's was where? I'm sitting in my thing. bedroom. <laughs> where are you sitting, Rick? <laughs> and I'm I'm actually sitting. I've I spent Memorial Day weekend and a few days before that at uh, at my mom's. So I'm about a 40 minute drive from Corbin, but I've been with my mom for the past Memorial Day weekend and a few days prior. Yeah. Which part of America you guys are? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Ah, okay. And and your mom as well? Yeah, we're here in LA. Yeah. I live with my wife and baby. I know. I saw you. The baby that I said yes. Yeah. This one just looks so cute. You know? Yeah. He's I adorable. Know what he's to adorable. Say about my work. Really adorable. Yeah. Yeah. I did want to ask you about because so you talked about monsoon wedding and it was. It's so funny that you talked about you. You're looking for all your lines, right? And you're just picking up a plate. But when we saw it, you, you and VJ Roz, your chemistry was the like. Even though everybody in that film was phenomenal and that film was really, really good, that's the part that really stuck out to us. Your chemistry with VJ Roz uh, in that film. Uh, can can you talk about uh, that and the chemistry you had with him? Did you feel that chemistry uh, with him on uh, while you were filming? <laughs> no, I actually, I rehearsed with some an entirely different actor. Oh, really? Uh, uh, and uh, after rehearsals were over, he's a very, very well-known, uh, massively popular actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sha- Shah Rukh Khan, right? Older than him. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> and for his comic timing, and yeah. he's a comedian and a very senior actor. And I think I'm maybe like 15 years older than me or something. Anyway, so we did our rehearsals and. Uh, I got finalized, and uh, and then Mira realized that there's already the underlining current of uh, pedophilia in the film. Yeah. And uh, having Dubey look so much older than Alice, mm. uh, she didn't want that, and so she could either recast me or or Dubey. And I'm so glad I didn't know any of this was going. Uh, but she recast this really well-known actor. Wow! Okay? And I mean, no one would have, no one knew me, you know. So it wouldn't really matter. She got cast, she got replaced, whatever. Who cares? Uh, uh, but for some reason, she changed. And if Vijay's casting was really last minute, we are. I mean, I, he's a dear friend now, but so I never met him. I never had any rehearsal <laughs> with him, uh, and. Uh, so the chemistry was really the chemistry that one feels when one is in the hands of a really phenomenal director. I was in love with Mira. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, and the camera was like a really, like a really kind friend. Like the kind of palpitations I felt while theater is where it all started, and I'm so grateful for it. But I was always aware of the audience in 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 a play in a live act sure. and it made sure. me very nervous very nervous the kind of person i was like for me acting was an act of defiance you know i was just trying to prove that i can do it yeah uh, because if i can do that then i can do other things which are very important for me beyond acting and uh yeah but when i was in front of deck quinn's camera i realized that my goodness it's such a such a kind friend who just sees everything who can see what's going on inside you without you having to do much. Whereas in theater, you have to project a lot so that the la- person in the last row can hear you, see you, feel you. And and here I just felt, I felt so comfortable. I just knew it, that this is, this is that sweet spot that I was looking for, mm. where I don't feel more and I don't feel less. I just feel, you mm. know, and uh, and Mira gave that to me and I'm so grateful. Uh, shit, what was your question? Plates. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, I knew it once I was there. Yeah. Like, those scenes that were written of her trying out jewelry. I just like, she's trying out jewelry, he sees her, she takes it off. But basically, I think I was just miffed about not having big lines and, you know, mm-hmm. thinking it's not important. Uh, but of course, it was so important. It was so such an important character and, uh, and the chemistry was really, I think the chemistry 
that I, I felt with the director, I felt with the, you know, the camera, I felt with, with cinema, because it, it was really my first, you know, yeah. and Vijay was, you know, so wonderful, like, he did his own thing, I did my own thing, he never told me how to act, he had done work already, he was a much seasoned actor, he came from the repertory, he had done years and years, he had years and years of training, and, uh, you know, such humility to have not said anything, they all knew I was like a complete, you know, I was reading, you know, English literature, Mm-hmm. in between takes you know, I had so much to study uh, and uh, but there was he was so wonderful in being completely non-judgmental and leaving it to the director I mean she, if she's cast her you know who am I to say anything yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah but yeah there is chemistry when I saw the film for the first time it was at Venice and uh, I'd never sat on a flight before because yeah, it was an international flight, and two people were chosen uh, to r- represent the film, in, and uh, it was Nasir and I. Oh, wow. And uh, this harks back to, uh, to a conversation in the green room. I used to feel a little sad on some days. Everybody's getting makeup done. Alice has no makeup. So I was like, man, and the movies, and, I, you know, the fuck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Where's you want to be glamorous. Yeah, exactly. It's not happening. And the makeup lady, Lulu, was so amazing. She would just put these aromatic Dr. Hauschka potions just to make me, it was just cream and, but, you know, really nice cream. And these, like, spritzers. And, you know, she would spray all these things to make me feel special. Because I told her, I feel really bad. You spend hours and hours on the other actors. And I just have to wear a sari and then some kajal. And, th- and that's it. I'm done. So, you know, she would, like, give me a head <laughs> So in one of those sessions, Mira had walked in and she was like, uh, she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing my no makeup makeup. Just Lulu trying to make me feel important. And uh, and she was having a chat. So where, where all in the world have you traveled? And I was like, actually nowhere. But, you know, I'm an armchair traveler. I've read so much about so many cultures and, you know, but I've not seen any of these places. And uh, so she just, you know, we talked a lot and she mentioned something about uh, well, I'll do what I can to show you a little bit of the world. People mm. say things. Yeah. People say a lot of things uh, in our industry. And um, yeah, two years later, film was done. Everyone's forgotten. Everybody moved on. And I get a call that two people are selected, and that was one was me in, in a cast. You you know that cast? Yeah. Like you know that yeah. was like. They're like national treasures. I mean, each of them are really wonderful actors who have won so many awards and and she kept her promise. So here I was sitting on a flight, never, never stepped outside my country. And I land in Venice, the first <laughs> place. <It's> unfair. Dang. <laughs> and the airport with my name clerk. And uh, he takes me to, he said, you know, your taxi is waiting. The taxi, I was looking, it's a water taxi, man. <laughs> is that fair? Are you supposed to, like, you know, jump universes like that without some sort of prep in between? Um, but, you know, there was, it was just so special to have that kind of, um, uh, I, I, I think it, it was just a m- many things coming together, which yeah. made me feel like, uh, which is what I, why I, I've continued practicing Buddhism and I've continued with acting because I feel it's it brings together a lot of things in my life which I wouldn't have traveled to these places and I have, wouldn't have had the dream, you know, audacity to meet the kind of people. Um, uh, I'm not saying you have to travel to be broad-minded. There are a lot of us who travel, are very well traveled but are complete bigots, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and I know people who have not traveled and who don't have degrees and who are extremely open-minded. And uh, so I, I don't think that's important. Uh, but I'm very grateful. I'm yeah. very grateful that I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So you you said that one of the key elements that catapulted you into acting, for lack of a better term, was watching a one-person show. Have you ever done one? 
I tried doing uh, something of that kind in Lincoln Center. I did a one-woman show, um, which was basically a retelling of the uh, a particular Indian epic, very well-known Indian epic from the woman's point of view. Uh, I did do that. Um, yeah, but my level of skill was uh, nothing compared to the, the one-man show that I saw. <laughs> like, I, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I have good taste. The thing is, I have good taste. Uh -huh. That that matters, you know. That counts. And I've had yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I think I've heard you say that you've made a career out of playing marginalized people. Uh, I think that I heard you say that in an interview. Is that something that's important to yeah. you, or is that just something that um, that just kind of happened? Are those just the characters you you flock to because of you you feel sympathetic or you you, you can empathize with them? I you know I don't think it I I, it, I think it would be foolish for me to say just things just happen mm -hmm. uh, because I think everything happens for a reason. I think uh, it. Uh, you know, so um, I, I wouldn't say it's coincidence or chance, uh, but those were also the films that came to me that I really liked. Mm -hmm. And not too much else came. I haven't said no to too much, mm -hmm. you know. I think I just naturally repel certain kinds of things, like we all do. Like certain kind of people won't, won't you know, come anywhere near me. And uh, I think we all do that, right? We, we attract. Uh, as, you know, we attract a certain kind of drama, yeah. each of us, depending yes. on our yes. own uh, stuff that's going on inside us. And uh, but it it catches up with you, I think. Uh, now looking back twenty years, I do feel that yes, I have made a living out of playing characters that are marginalized and are really poor. And uh, I'm tired of that. Mm. Uh, I realized that two years ago that uh, I, I never had an issue, right? Like with playing a class that I don't belong to, playing a gender that I don't belong to, yeah. playing a religion that I've not grown up with, uh, learning a language that I've, you know, I've learned so many languages for you know, different films. Um, but I, I think I was doing not I think, I know I was doing Gautam Ghosh's film, Ragir, and uh, I mean, I, you know, I mean, these two characters are just traversing this insane land, ins insanely difficult landscape, harsh landscape, it's just rock and dry heat and wind and, and then they get stuck in the rain and then, you know, it's just raining and, and we are just shooting and we're just shooting and I fall sick and in our fever, but we have to keep shooting and and I'm in a bus stop and it was a scene I remember where Adil and I are in a bus stop and we are taking shelter, we are absolutely soaking wet and then we have to sleep there that night. It's just a film. Yeah, so we're just shooting for those few days, few weeks. And um, I remember shivering, shivering in that bus stop and thinking, oh my God, I just want to go back to my room. I just want to go back to my dry hotel room, that bed and and then just feeling the sense of guilt that, oh my goodness, you can't even, you finding it so difficult to just act the part of a woman who has to do this every day. And this is the country mm -hmm. where I come from. This, it's so normal. We are so, de whatever the word is, desensitized, not sensitized. Uh, oh shit, did I lose you guys? No, no, oh. we're here. I don't know. Can You're you here. hear? Can you hear us? And, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. And I, I, I realized that, okay, this is this is great, and uh, but I do want to take a break from... I just want to play characters that are rich. I'm not rich either, you know? <laughs> how, how, how come I, I don't get cast for people who are really rich? <laughs> uh, 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 why do I get the tragic... Also, my husband's really... He's a really funny guy, and he was like, man, uh, he, he's, he's in really action films and, and, and comedy and... And she's like, you know, I love you, but like your films are really intense. It's not really something I would watch by choice, you know. I mean, <laughs> you know, and uh, and so you've got to do a little bit of comedy, you know. You've got to like lighten up, otherwise this marriage. And I'm like, okay, okay, you know, I'm put this out. <laughs> and, 
And I'm really glad because you know, like sometimes you just need to understand that you've got comfortable. You've got comfortable in a certain zone, and, and you know, I am a person who's very intense. And and my partner has really come in in the last ten years and challenged that in so many ways, right? In my personal life, but I don't think I had the courage for it to transition in my work life because I was so comfortable playing a certain kind of characters mm. uh, because it came to me easy, whereas uh, comedy has a very different timing and mm-hmm. you know. So, uh, but I am so glad because Hindi medium, which was the uh, Angrezi medium, which you guys saw, was a yeah. sequel to a, a film, and yeah. uh, and there it was wonderful. It was comic. It was. And my scenes were just with Irfan, and you know we enjoyed. It was just about timing, and we just got a laugh, and and uh, and I realized that I really do want to, I do want to explore the lighter vein of uh, life and uh, and things that are not necessarily so intense. And also, uh, I d- did want to take a break from making money from representing, uh, uh, you know. Uh, people who have so little i I, mm. I have much more and i was getting a bit uncomfortable uh it, it didn't matter earlier honestly it didn't matter because it's a, it's a part right you do your best as an artist to learn the language to understand the nuance of the part to understand the character and you don't think about it beyond that but 20 years down the line when people can only imagine you in a certain way and in a certain you know it, it, it's like uh, the stereotyping that happens across the world is reveals so much about our biases, right? You you see a person in a certain way, and you can only imagine them in a certain way, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. it was really, it was great. And I f- I didn't feel shallow at all. Telling my manager, I just want to play someone rich, okay? <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> hilarious. It felt great. Get to do do that, and you know. So yeah, Rick. Um, is there? A, so I would say that, that was my next question, but I think you just answered it. That if there's <coughs> a kind of role you would like to play the most right now, it would probably be a very, very wealthy woman in a great comedy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Or a really horrid person. You mm. know, I get, I get to play really noble but really poor in really tragic situation you know mm. uh and uh, and while i'm really happy that I, I you know the 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 optimism of like i mean you know like ratna and sir she's so wonderful like i felt privileged to play her but i'm so not that person you know in terms and i don't mean by class or but it's just uh the the sense of lightness the sense of uh, resilience and uh, you know uh, it was so refreshing you know but uh, yeah I would really like to play someone who is horrid oh, you, and, could, you could play a good villain <laughs> yeah right I really want to um, uh, I, yeah, there's something exciting that I've shot for which was really really fun because I'm so bad I just loved it. It was so good to be bad. I can't tell you. It was like, oh my god, I was born to be bad. Why? How? <laughs> I love it. I can't. I can't wait for that. Whoa! I'm very excited for whatever this is coming up. Uh, I, I, will, I will tell you when I can. It's right now under wraps. There yeah. might be some reshoot. So yeah. But okay. I. Yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah. I can't. I can't wait to see that. Um, you've worked. I want to ask you a few questions about Kisa because uh, we we loved Kisa, uh, absolutely adored it. Um, but I want to talk to you, one about working with Irfan multiple times and your relationship with Irfan, but also playing a character that grew up thinking he was a different gen. Uh, she was a different gender than what she was. Uh, what, can you ex- talk about the, the experience of uh, playing uh, that role? Because it was a very complex role, and you did it beautifully. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I think I think after Mira, the next director who came and turned my world upside down and has shaped it so profoundly was Anoop Singh. Um, uh, because uh, I asked the usual questions. Oh, I'm, I was so caught up about playing. You know, I mean, it's an actor's dream, right? To get a part yeah. like that where you, you know, it's a gender bender. You don't get parts like that very often. Yeah. And you don't get parts like that so well contextualized in in your own history and culture um, and, uh, and and also you rarely get a film where you are really y you yourself are unable to understand the mystery of the film yeah uh, because it's a folk tale and like how it ends it's it's left a lot of people who've been with the film and loved it and not like the last because they got confused what really happened but for me that, that was I, I, it was one of my conversations with Irfan, where it's very slyly, Rasika and I thought we'll, over dinner, we'll ask Irfan what really happens in that scene. And once he tells us, we'll know. But we pretend like we know it anyway. So, you know, where he and I become the father and the son become one. I mean, it's in Christianity, these, yeah. these, uh, the, these, these motives and... Uh, are across cultures, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we wanted to understand the linear in a linear fashion. What really happens exactly? Who am I? Who is he? Where is who is left? Because you know. So we were trying to understand and uh, you know just hey, so you know if I what do you that scene? Yeah, you know we're gonna shoot that. You know we like what 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 are your feelings about it? You know. And, and he just looks through. He smelt the shit and he was like look through it and he was like, why do you want to know everything? Why, 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 uh, you know, and I was like, he's like, even I don't understand it. I was like, what? Even you don't understand it? We are so far, you know? <laughs> you know? Uh, you, you are in fun and you don't understand it. And uh, he was like, yeah. And as usual, you know, it was something just so profound and something so irreverent at the same time and he just said but you don't need to understand everything it's so boring to do a film where you understand everything and mm. you've understood everything then you come and sh uh, share this pre-prepared understanding in front of the camera and then the audience watches it and if you're efficient enough and you're economic enough and people kind of th think that you're good enough you will be applauded for it and be like yeah great work well but he said it's rare in your career to come across scripts and parts that you yourself don't understand entirely, mm. but something in it resonates with something deeply within you, you know. Mm -hmm. And and he's really like he was really right that I mean you know there's that scene when we actually shot for that scene it didn't matter it didn't matter to me because he lifts me up and then he opens his mouth really he opens his mouth and almost swallows me in and the way we shoot it is that I just disappear so I have to collapse and fall at his feet uh, and then it's just hit in the frame and uh, when I actually shot for it Ifran was holding me up and then I just slipped and I saw his mouth open and then I just slipped and I fell to his feet and I kept looking at his feet they were he has beautiful feet really beautiful and I just looked at his feet and I was like, man, I love your feet. I, 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 I could be here at your feet for hours. We, I could do, you can do this as many times as you want. It was hot. The sand was hot. But I couldn't feel anything. Mm. I was just looking at his feet, you know. And, uh, and that's when I realized that that's perhaps how Cover felt. Mm. That, you know, she loves her father so much. That if he needed her to look and feel and be like a man, then that's what she would be, even if it meant annihilating herself. Mm. He literally, his desire for a son was so manic, like the desire for a son is so prevalent in most of India, mm. that the female infanticide is so, it's still something we are grappling with mm. that um, he was willing to erase the identity of his beloved 
in order for his beloved to look like something that was socially uh, permissible and act, and and she was willing to do that for him mm-hmm. you know and that's love you know so uh, it, it, you know it was it's one of those things like and i know i have completely digressed into a story about irfan uh, but oh, it's perfect it it's really uh I, I and he told me something he said you have to understand like whenever i would complain to him about not having work that was good enough and and he'd be like don't complain man it's just so irritating to have actors whine about not having work we've all we've all not had work so i'm like yeah easy for you to say you have some <laughs> work right now and you know and he was like don't be this tragedy queen and you know uh, just know that you are damn lucky that you are sitting here and working with anu at a you know i would kill for that mm and and truly anup is a magnificent director the kind of tools that anup has given me like when i was discussing with irfan like there was a scene where we were stuck and he gave me an example he helped me in a very peculiar way and he helped irfan in a very peculiar way and when we both met later and we discussed how did you how what did he tell you because i we were stuck and i was amazed at what technique he used with irfan what technique he used with me and how he like you know i what i would keep asking should i watch boys don't cry should i watch this film you know the other films where you know he's like i don't want you to watch any of these films mm. because i don't want you to play a man i just want you to focus on doing whatever it takes to make your father love you mm. great advice yeah that was my focus my focus was you want me to do this you want me to tape my breast you want me to be whatever you know I'll, as much as i can but i'm really tiny you know yeah uh i can only do so much but i'll do whatever it takes and that's all so the focus immediately went from you know how to be a man and i need to sit like this and i need to do that and and anup was like which man are you going to copy which two men walk alike and sit alike what is manly enough who is a man right uh you know and he just broke i mean our friendship is is you know it's one of my most uh, he's like really a, such a dear friend and i am so lucky to have him in my life um and uh, i'll never take it for granted given that uh if fan wanted to you know move to a, a better place and uh, um but but anu like whatever he has given me in this film are tools that i can i've used in so many other films after that i i think that, that's what was so remarkable about him you know there are certain people in certain directors when they you are around them their energy is so charismatic that they'll just bring out something from you mm-hmm. right anu yes. has that he also has something else he'll give you things that you can use even after he has gone and that is just generosity right because these are like i mean i never thought i would have to re- I, i could look at a chinese painting and look at a dragon stroke and understand how i can plan a scene i i didn't know i i, I didn't know a chinese painting could help me understand a scene mm. like in in kista he was telling me that so who are your actors in the scene and i'm like yeah this is fun he said no what what else and You know, he had that hill there, that mountain there, you know, that tree there, and you know, uh, are you at odds with them or are they your friends? Because depending on whether you are in in harmony with them or in confrontation with your environment, uh, your body language will be completely different. Mm. And I really never took into account the architecture of a space when I acted. I just took into account the people, uh, but. we enter certain rooms and we are very comfortable you know we enter certain spaces and we are very comfortable and we enter certain spaces and we are not comfortable we don't know why but it changes the way we move around in that room the way we talk to people so Absolutely. i mean like this is one example but like anup has given me so many such you know such things um that it was really an acting school for me all over again like really relearning and uh, and as far as the whole gender fluidity his celebration of androgyny his uh, his own ethos and philosophy i mean 
you know, my conversations with him is that, you know, there's so much of the violence that we are seeing in this world today is because we want to create divisions. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to create these binaries, man, woman. Men yeah. have to be like this, women have to be. Yeah. This is what it means to be American. This is what it means to be Indian. You know, this is what it means to be, uh, you know, uh, um, this is what it means to be successful. This is what a talented person looks like. This is what it, you know, you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. And uh, this is national. This is being a patriot. This is being anti-national. Mm. Um, and so much of these divisions that we make, there's such a violence in it, you know, mm -hmm. that this side of the line is this, you have to be on this side of the line. You can't be friends with this, you can't be here and be friends with this side of the line. You know, and these, um, so that's why I think this sense of absolute, that, you know, shattering it and really celebrating that which we don't understand entirely, but can resonate with, you know, that which is androgynous, that which is familiar and yet unfamiliar, uh, you know, that which you understand and yet don't understand. This kind of acceptance of, um, it, it was in the script, it's in the director, it was in the way, the process that we took to, you know, shoot the film. Uh, it's such a sense of play. There wasn't, you know, uh, it was like if we did one take this way, if we did another take completely different. There was no sense of this is the truth, mm -hmm. you know. We'll arrive at it, we'll arrive at it, you know, yeah. at something. So that, that's a, that's, that was like, it was a really deeply spiritual experience to work on a film like that and to get paid for it and, you know, to, to have made those friends and uh, it's, it, it was transformational. It was really beyond what you, uh, and, and I did do many films after that which were for money or for a certain kind of character because I was intrigued by that character, but uh, I, I do, I do feel something is happening, something is shifting where I realize that the people we work with have a profound, profound influence on your life. And I'm, sh you, I'm sure you two do interviews together, review films together. The kind of understanding, you know, that you have built and created over time is so precious, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so, I, I, you know, I have to say that, I mean, Anoop has also opened a gate in my life where I'm attracting certain kinds of people and certain kinds of directors and collaborators who um, who deeply care about the work and deeply care about you. So yeah. if you're not in a good place and your mom is not well, they will understand it because work is not the only thing in life, you yeah, know? Absolutely. Uh, and absolutely. Uh, and us as human beings and, and kind of celebrating that and bringing that into the work. I mean, the kind of directors now, like, do you, do you know, Rima Das, who made oh, Village yeah. Rockstars. And oh, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. So, so she's not, like another wonderful, wonderful gift that has happened to me. So uh, getting a chance to work with Rima. Um, then there's a director called Soumya Nanda Sahi. Uh, it's going to be his debut feature, but he's a really incredible DOP. He has shot <coughs> the last in the last few years, the best films that have come out of India, uh, uh, Ibaleu, Nasir, mm. uh, Anamika Haksarsan, have all been shot by him. And uh, when I met him for his film, and you know, I, I realized that I, just talking and reading his film, I realized that what kind of human being has written this film? I really want to meet that person. And when I met him, I was just like, I'll do anything. I'll do anything for you. Because I realized when when you meet people like directors like that, human beings like that, like you, you've just got to, you've got to know that this hasn't happened by some accident, right? And we don't know how long yes. we are going to all be here. So, uh, and that Anoop really taught me not to take it for granted, uh, uh, you know, when you encounter such, such people. Um, so, yeah, I can go on talking about Anoop. He, he's, he's changed. It's really changed so much. So, which is why I was horrified when my husband met Anoop after the screening of Kissa and went out for dinner and then he came home for some coffee and chocolate and Anoop was, you know, he's wonderfully inclusive. So, you know, he never separates work from the family and he always wanted to meet whoever. So, he asked Kunal, my, he asked my partner, what do you think about the film? And uh, Kunal, my husband knows how important this is for me, you know, and I've been obsessed with this project. I prepped for that film for nine months. 
you know, and then we shot for it. So, so Kunal told him, yeah, it's a good film, but, uh, you know, I have something to say to you and Rotna. I really think we I snap, and I think you and her really need to do a comedy. Okay? And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, what the hell? Like, you can't talk to my, you know, only right? And Anup was just laughing. He was just like, you sound just like my wife. <laughs> you know? And, uh, but anyway, man, these are like, these are, it's it's really precious when you can love what you do and in that journey meet people who transform you so deeply and, you know, yeah. uh, it's amazing. It's yeah. really amazing. Absolutely. Um, and I want to talk to you about um, the, uh, I can't believe I just lost my place. I was... It was funny. It was, <laughs> it was listening to you. and then, <laughs> I apologize. Oh, yes. Sorry. I got it. Um, did you, uh, do you, or um, will you ever have interest in coming to Hollywood or any other industry around the world uh, in acting in, in, in different uh, films in different industries outside of India? Because uh, um, I just say selfishly, we want people in, 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 in America to um, see you. Uh, obviously, we want them to see your work that you, you've already done, but to uh, see you prominently in, in maybe a Hollywood film or even uh, films around the world, does that any of any interest to you? You know, I really thought when I was I was in New York for four and a half years, right? And, uh, and uh, I could have taken a flight to L.A. many a times. Please do. Right? Uh, but I, uh, but I, I just was so afraid because I... Uh, uh, it felt too much. Mm. It felt too much. Uh, uh, and New York, and what happened was the few auditions that I did get called for, it, the parts were so, um, uh, what do I say? They were so insipid. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they were, it, it, it was just a matter of the race. It had nothing to do with what I could bring to the table. And uh, and I did realize then that no, this is not what I want to do. I'd yeah. rather go and back and do a Bollywood film, which I which is, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, which uh, it make that makes more sense to me than this because yeah. if I have, despite all my education, have to play a stereotype of an of an Indian, yeah, in America, I'm here. I'm here on a master's program, at the top right. of my class. Right. being funded by by Indians you know uh, it doesn't make sense for me to put set the clock back mm. uh, people have worked so hard to to be able to look at each other as as human beings I, look at it I mean I mean I lived in New York right I mean every second person that you bump into on your way to work or on your way back is from a country different from yours. Yeah. So right. when yeah. We, when that is the level of diversity, why do our films look like this? Mm. Absolutely. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I would love I mean we've grown up watching American films, right? Uh, we were, you know, uh so the the kind of impact and influence American films have had uh, and European films have had and Japanese films have had and Korean films have had and our, our lives are huge uh, so it would be great to work in in LA but it has to uh, you know it would be really nice to be cast uh, uh, I don't know it just needs to be a little bit more blind man it needs yeah. to uh, it needs to be uh, okay, I can't, I can't, cannot explain this in words without offending anybody. But what what I do want to give an example is it's the actress Maggie Chung, who's married to Olivier Sai, this French amazing director. And uh, Maggie Chung is from China, but I think she was grew up in London, uh, but spent some time in France. So she speaks fluent Cantonese. Uh, uh, she 
speaks uh, uh, French, she speaks English, and in in one of Olivia Sai's film where he cast her, and she's done this, Maggie Chung has done this incredible, I mean, we talk about In the Mood for Love and so many, so many, uh, you know, other incredible, huge blockbuster Chinese films, classical, where she's the classical, you know, beauty. And uh, and then Olivia Sai sees her for the woman that she is, who can speak multiple languages, seamlessly move from one culture to another. And this film I saw of, of hers, which she directed, she's, I think, w when she goes into the kitchen, she's speaking in Chinese, she comes out, she's speaking in French, and she steps out for a call and she's speaking in English. Mm. Uh, and I realized that I'll wait for this. I'll wait for this where I can I can <laughs> be with a, a Caucasian man in a room and the scene starts and we are we are in the middle of a scene without having to explain that, oh, she's the immigrant neighbor. You know, <laughs> from yeah. India, uh, yes. you know, or she's that terrorist, or she is the lady who works in the Seven Eleven. Uh, you know, the man who works, his wife. I don't need all this signaling because I've lived in that country. I love many things about that country, and I do see that the country, a cross section of that country, looks um, so diverse. You know, uh, so. I, and I've had that experience with America and I've been included in spaces where I've not been made to feel the color of my skin. Mm. And I, I, and I feel like I, I will, and, and I do think it's happened now. It's happening now yeah. in, in the kind of, you know, it's just not happening when I was there. Lehman Brothers had just come right. down. Yeah. You know, it was a mess situation, 2008, the, you know, uh, uh, America was hurting. It, yeah. it was hurting. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, um, and that's why I left because I was like, no, I yeah. can't do that. I can't do that. But yes, man, I would love to, I, I would love to, uh, you know, I, I think, I think we need to celebrate. I think we need scripts where we don't explain so much about signal so much about what we, who our gods are and, you know, yeah. you know, which country we come yeah. from, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's boring. To you know, to talk people. about yeah. these, yeah, because we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you know, I mean, that was, that, that was life. I mean, my bagel shop was run by somebody from Ukraine and, you know, where I, where I picked up my dry cleaning was by somebody else whose son was also studying with me at NYU. Right. These are, this is, you know, this kind of crisscrossing. Why can't our cinema reflect that, you know? Absolutely. Um, and I do hope it will, and I think it's already moving towards that. I mean, there's some wonderful uh, kind of assimilation that has happened, but has it happened for actors who don't have a North American accent? Mm. Yep. Uh, you, you know, so I, I really, uh, I mean, Irf, Irfan has, you know, uh, been one of those few actors who have, uh, but yeah, I, I still feel like if the language, if the way I speak English is different from the way you speak English and the way somebody else in another city in America speaks English differently, we all have different accents. That's what, but in a scene when you come together, a lot like, you know, the bathroom in my office in New York, where there were different people shitting, pissing, washing their hands, sounding very yep. different. If that was a scene yeah. in a film, would you? you explain why that person sounds like that and why this person sounds like that would be exposition that's not yeah. drama that's not cinematic absolutely absolutely but, but um it, we'll get there man i really i really believe we'll get there absolutely. you know and we'll i think we'll have you guys are the bridges right like we are the bridges i think you know uh, yes where yes. we're talking about craft we're talking about cinema we're talking about you know what we like what we don't like and it's not so, uh, so tell me, what is it like in India? You know, you've, you've been to India, <laughs> you know, uh, so, yeah, so it'll happen and I really want it to happen, but yeah. it has to happen in a way that makes sense, you yeah. know? Yes, yes. Well, what is it like in India? I'm kidding, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, I do want to thank you so much for, for chatting with us. It's been an absolute 
pleasure. I want to end it off with just some dumb questions just to get you know a little better. Uh, one, coffee or chai? Coffee, 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 mm. coffee. Black, no sugar, no milk. It has to be good coffee. Single oh. estate preferably. Yeah. I love it. Uh, favorite alcoholic yeah. beverage? Starbucks. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Starbucks is, sorry, Starbucks, but your coffee's bitter. <laughs> I yeah. I was yeah, a. It is over roasted. Yeah. Oh, it is. It's yeah. it's I, I I worked at Starbucks for many many years. They have uh, some of the worst beans uh, uh, ever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have terrible terrible they beans. Uh, favorite yeah. favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink. I don't drink anymore. Okay. Uh, I, it's been more than ten years. Yeah, so I don't know. I I wish no I could be cool and say something, but. <laughs> I favorite like, favorite non-alcoholic beverage then uh oh man there's this uh there's this amazing thing i i'd love to make it for you guys whenever we meet it you roast these raw mangoes and then you make it into oh. you roast it so it has a really woody finish it has a really mm. woody aftertaste because you roast it and then you make a puree out of it and then you then you make the concentrate and then you just put some masalas in it which is just roasted cumin powder and just roast it and then make it a powder and then add it and add salt and you can add some mint leaves and then oh my goodness it's mm. just delicious yes, I will yes, make yes, it yes, yes. Yes. Up and we can meet and you know I'm shooting for something in LA maybe and then we should whenever we, we should come whenever we'll meet Whenever you come here, or if we are back in there, uh, whenever whenever the world allows us to uh, travel again, uh, we would love to do that. Uh, favorite Hollywood film? Uh, wow. Favorite. Mm, I love the favorite, actually. Uh, oh, oh, nice. It, it was really, I, I'm just trying to think. I, I've not seen films for the last two years because I felt fiction has just not cut it for me at all, mm. given that the reality has been so, you know, uh, I found it very difficult to escape to fiction and watch anything. But I remember before the lockdown, I was in Singapore and I watched The Favourite and I was just blown by it. so many things in that film, the sound mm. design, performances, um yeah, I was, I was, yeah. Fav so favorite Indian film, any region? Favorite Indian film. Mm, there's so many. Uh, uh, I, there's a film called Meghe Dhaka Tara, which Riti Ghatak's film, which I really, really enjoy. Mm. I go back to it. Uh, yeah. Isn't it cruel to choose something? Doesn't it feel like if you yeah. have two kids and ask you which is... You do one, exactly. One, one, yeah, I know. I just... Yeah, yeah, that's... You're doing that. <laughs> that's I know what to do with you when we meet. <laughs> uh, favorite... Okay. Favorite uh, Hollywood actor, male and female? <laughs> um, uh, favorite. Hmm. Uh, oh gosh, so difficult. I mean, seeing people's faces, you know, and then I'm just wondering why should I pick you and not you? <laughs> you can say a couple. That's fine. You don't have to say one. <laughs> just, just tell us who you like. But truly, uh, truly, the the the. I don't know. I don't even know where to start. Um, Oh my goodness! Uh, what was that film? Uh, favorite film? I just didn't. I didn't choose that. But what? Um, marriage on marriage? Yeah, the marriage story. 
recently, Marriage Story. Oh my goodness. With um, yeah. Adam Driver and um, S- uh, Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know who to root for. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was yeah. just. Uh, my goodness, and yeah, if I have to think, they were both, I mean, incredible examples of wonderful American yeah. actors of their time, pushing, 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 pushing uh, the medium and trying different things. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I just remember, because I, I, I remember a scene from that film, thinking favorite actors, how I loved them in that film. And uh, I realized I loved that film too, actually. It's a great. It was a great film. I'm gonna find the ways of not answering your question. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. And your your favorite thing to have for breakfast? My favorite thing to have for breakfast would be uh, lots of fruits, like mm. mango. I could eat mangoes and lots of mangoes for breakfast. And if it's been a rough night, then I'd be happy to uh, uh, eat a burger. Mm. You know. <laughs> nice. It's doomed. Yeah. Might as well die eating a burger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for for chatting with us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, it's it's been just like you said, talking talking to a, a friend. Even though we 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 just met, you you're you're such a genuine person, and you're such a talented actress. And uh, yeah. we would love to just talk to you in person anytime you're in LA. Anytime we're back in India, we'd love to just sit down and have a coffee with you so uh looking forward to that right yeah. yes yeah, absolutely absolutely any of the things like for example the project that's under wraps right now please we the moment we know of anything else that you're doing we want to know so we can share it with everybody that we're connected with and i i'm reminded of what what you said at the very beginning of the the interview you had said that you were thinking about what you wanted to do with your life and all you can think about was being sincere and who the hell gets paid to be sincere. But I, you've actually, in a very providential way, have become exactly that very thing because all of the work that you do, and in this interview, there is a depth of sincerity about you that you should never in any way question or lose because you are, you're doing what that young girl said. I can just be sincere. I see it in everything you do. So don't change. Stay exactly the way that you are. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Keep you have a wa- safe and, Thank you. Uh, you too. Stay safe. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.